that some of you are still in the waiting room, but we'll get started. I am the associate director here at the Schusterman Center for Israel Studies. I am thrilled that we are working today with the Brandeis Library, with the National Library of Israel um, for an introduction on how to use this really, really exciting resource. Uh, I want to thank everyone for coming. I see a lot of really diverse audience members, journalists, librarians, academics. I especially want to thank um, our director, Professor Jonathan Sarna, whose idea it was to have this. And of course, um, our Judaica librarian, Dr. Rachel Greenbat, and our partner from the National Library of Israel, Ayal Miller. I encourage you uh, to check out the Schusterman Center on social media, our website, and join us for any of our programs. And with that, I will pass it over to you, Rachel. Rachel, you're muted. I've only been on Zoom since yeah. my, and several years before that. Welcome, everyone. We're extremely excited about this event. This is a fantastic site that has been around for quite some time, but that has seen a renewal and is uh, a great new face. And Eyal, in a second, will show you many cool things about it. Um, we have here, as Shana said, um, scholars, students, community members. We have, I've seen uh, many librarians who registered for this event. And if you would be interested, library professionals in setting up with AL, whom I will introduce in one second, um, a, a follow-up or additional event uh, that is geared specifically for library professionals. I'll put that link, uh, a link in the chat in a minute that will just be, it's just an interest sheet for me to see where the interest is. In the unlikely event that the uh, meeting is Zoom bombed, we will close down the meeting and you will all get emails, stay by your email for a couple of minutes. And as you can see, the meeting is being recorded, so you should be aware of that. And we hope to send out um, an email probably in about a week with a link to the recording and any other follow-up information that we have. We'd love to hear your feedback. Also, you are welcome to email me anytime with any concern about uh, the Brandeis Library, Judaics at the Brandeis Library, help for students, for faculty, for scholars at large, for the community at large. Um, and I think with no further ado, we will introduce A.L. Miller, who is the Project and Technology Manager of Historical Jewish Press, which is a joint venture of the National Library of Israel and Tel Aviv University. So A.L., please. Um, Take us away. All right. Uh, good evening. Good afternoon, wherever wherever you may be. For us, it's already evening time here in Israel. Um, I also want to take the opportunity to thank uh, Shayna and Rachel uh, for organizing and coordinating uh, this event tonight, and also to uh, the person who initiated this idea of this event, Professor Jonathan Sarna. He's a longtime advisor and friend to the NLI and to the Jewish Historical Press Project. And I wish to thank um, him as well. Um, we have a short uh, time schedule or limited. Um, I can talk for hours about the project, but I, I'll, I'll do that in less than an hour. So you can have uh, questions. The idea here is to uh, give you all a short tour of the new uh, historical press project uh, website of the National Library of Israel. And as Rachel said, uh, the core of this uh, website is the historical Jewish press project of uh, NLI and Tel Aviv University and our partner um, and my partner, Professor Yaron Tzul. Uh, I will also uh, touch uh, at the end of uh, my words or during my words about another uh, important collection that is now incorporated into the press uh, site that is Gerard, uh, which is a Palestinian newspaper collection that has also been digitized and available online. So uh, without further ado, I will uh, share my screen now. Um, basically, the best way for you to reach our website is probably to write in Google like everyone does, Jewish Historical Press or just JPress. Here I'm in the digital library um, site of the National Library. Uh, as you can see, we have many other uh, digital uh, resources, uh, of manuscripts, Ktubot, maps. I encourage you all to take a look into these uh, collections. And uh, it's important to say that for us, uh, 
the I'm not objective for me uh, of all the uh, National Library digital projects, uh, historical Jewish press project is the crown jewel. But um, we do have a lot of other interesting things. It's part of a process that we've been trying to um, put emphasis on at the National Library of Israel to um, digitize as much of our materials, make them accessible. It's important year round every year. And I think that in a year like COVID, even more, of course. Um, a few words about our project, the Historical Jewish Press, as I mentioned with Tel Aviv University, they are our partners, but uh, it's uh, over 10 years that this new, uh, project website is online and we have uh, very important partners enabling us to give access to all of these newspapers. Today we have over 400 uh, Jewish newspapers from all over the world in over 17 languages, over 3 million pages. And uh, we have had um, over, we've had many partners in the past few years, I think worth mentioning, enabling us to give access to all these materials at no cost, which is important for us, of course, that all of this resource repository is available free worldwide. Um, our partners have many of them, but I think uh, the Litauer Foundation with Alan Divak have been a great help to us and also the Harvard Judaica Division Library, as well as our partners at Marley, the Manhattan Area Research Library Institute with NYU, NYPL, and Columbia. So what is this and how do you use this new website? Once you enter here, you can just click here on search and browse the newspapers. Mm. And I, I said to Rachel and Shana before that I hope my internet will uh, will be fine. It's been a bit shaky this uh, this afternoon, so I hope it will it won't give us any trouble. This is the first place you will uh, meet or encounter once you uh, hit the search and browse the newspapers. And what you see here is a, is basically a list of all of the newspapers that we have available online today. It's a very long list and we hope that it will become longer and longer. And I do want to mention, I see if, if you see why I'm not looking at a camera, the camera's here, I'm looking to this one. I'm just working with two screens and it's easier for me to look at the larger screen. So I apologize for that. You have my full attention. Um, this list here gives us uh, all of the newspapers available online. As I said, we have just of the historical Jewish, Jewish press, we have over 400 newspapers by now. But uh, as I mentioned before, the idea of the revitalized website is that we are now uh, able to put on just this one platform other digital uh, press uh, projects that we had scattered around. One important one is the children's press. It's small but important of uh, Hebrew and uh, Yiddish uh, children's and youth newspapers. Another important one, as I mentioned before, uh, is Jariad, our uh, Palestinian newspaper collection, which is also available on the same platform and searched upon, you can search across them, which is very interesting. You can search in Arabic, for example, across the board, you'll running, you, you can run into materials also from the Jewish Arabic press and the Palestinian press. And uh, another collection that is still not part of this, but uh, of the website, but it will be shortly, is the what we call contemporary daily press of uh, published in Israel. The NLI uh, collects all of the newspapers uh, published in Israel nowadays in whatever language. Um, we have from, of course, Hebrew, Arabic, Russian, English, French. Yiddish, Romanian, whatever, and they are all collected as digital form. Uh, and we will put them online. Unfortunately, majority of them will not be accessible outside of the NLI due to copyright restrictions, but we do hope that due to the fact that the library has been shut down for such a long time due to COVID, and uh, we might be able to convince at least some publishers to open access to their not to, let's say, to the yesterday's newspaper, but why not a month ago? So I will now um, go through the, the main parts of, uh, of our website, which are the titles page, which we are at, 
I will uh, further explain about the search options and later on um, about this dates feature. And if time uh, will allow us also the tags and uh, we will leave at least, I hope like 10, 15 minutes at the end uh, for questions and remarks. And I also encourage you, um, I'll write down my email. I'm sure that we won't be able to address all of the issues, questions, um, and you'll be able to contact me afterwards. Uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions. So you don't have to scroll down now all of this list. As you can see, it's just an ongoing list of uh, Jewish newspapers, unless you're very interested. Uh, if you know what newspaper you're looking for, you can just write it down here in the title keyword. Uh, if you want, if you, for example, you are looking for in English, all right, uh, you were looking for a Hebrew newspaper, Davar, you can write it down either in English here, I'm writing Davar in English, you can see it here, or Davar Leiladim, which is originally from our children's newspaper project. You can, of course, write it down, excuse me, also in Hebrew. Um, but uh, so once you see it here, you can click on the newspaper and you will be redirected to what we call newspaper ID. We have an ID for each newspaper on the website. It gives you some basic in bibliographical information. Uh, in some cases, we have a, a entry, like an encyclopedia entry, um, which is long. Sometimes it's short. We are working on it. Uh, so we, it will be eventually, I hope, as I've been talking to Professor Tsur, our partner from Tel Aviv, that it will be like uh, an encycl encyclopedia of Jewish newspapers at the end. So we get back here, this is uh, back to the titles page. Uh, that's what I did now is if I knew what newspaper I was looking for. You, you don't always know what newspaper you're looking for once you enter the database. Of course, we have a few hundreds, as I said. So you can filter them down with these few filters. Of course, if you know you're looking for newspapers just in Hebrew, for example, now you see showing 113 titles. It already uh, shows you all only the, only the Hebrew ones. You can choose if you want. See, let's say Yiddish. We have uh, 196 Yiddish titles, uh, but you can also filter them down by region. So you don't want all the Yiddish newspapers. If you're interested just in Yiddish newspapers published in North America, for example, here we're already talking about 60 titles. Um, now you have the list here. It's uh, alphabetical order according to the original language. So it would be according to the Yiddish language as you see Aleph, Aleph, Aleph. Um, now you can also re restrict uh, by years. So if you don't want all the Yiddish newspapers published in North America, you're just interested in the ones published in the 19th century. So now I'm uh, up to 1900. So now you have 12 titles. Uh, matching your choices. And this way you can filter and find the newspapers that are interesting to you. If you are looking just for Yiddish newspapers in 19th century published in North America, these are the titles that we have to offer. Um, and of course, it's worth checking time after time as we do add uh, a lot of newspapers on a monthly basis. Um, so this is quite, a, I think, a basic feature. Uh, you can ask and you can ask it this question regarding all the website, why did we choose to narrow it down just to these three filters? Of course, we could also add a few more choices. Let's say uh, city published, because you know we have all these inf this information, the city it was published in, who is the publisher. Um, we're always, you know, we want this website. It's a bit complicated as is. Uh, we try to simplify it. So after you run a search, you can uh, fill, add more filters with much more uh, in the advanced search. Um, if you want to filter down, let's say, the results by city or by uh, uh, decades and so forth. So this is, uh, I think, the basic feature of just the titles list. And uh, if you have questions, and said, uh, write them down. And at the end of uh, the session, we'll have time for questions. I am moving on to uh, maybe the main feature of the site. But before that, uh, I do want to address one thing, the registration and logging in. 
it's not mandatory. You don't have to register to use the site. You can just uh, search. And I think for most of the things that uh, uh, that most users need, it's you don't need to register. But I do recommend registering because if once you are registered, I will log in because I'm already registered. Once uh, you register, you have a few things that you can only do one, once registered. For example, uh, you can save your search history. You can prepare, you can uh, have a list. Uh, you want, can create private lists uh, f that are that of things that are in you are interested in. Uh, I will show it uh, shortly and when once I move to the search facet. So as I said, it's not you, you don't have to register, but uh, I highly recommend you'll have a better experience using the site if you do, I think. Um, I'm moving on to the search facet, which basically gives you access to the heart of our collection. Uh, search all of the material online uh, on the website, said a uh, oh, few hundred newspapers, uh, is fully searchable. That means that uh, we run OCR on all of the material before we uh, upload it. We do a lot of QA before to ensure that um, the material is in right order, that we aren't missing any pages or issues, and we do go out of hand, uh, out of our way to locate uh, missing issues, missing pages. Um, we know that uh, once we digitize a title, most chances are it won't be digitized again, and most chances are that most people will access it through the website. So we have a, a big responsibility. We are aware of that, um, and that's why. Um, if you, when using uh, the website, run into, you know, eventually, at the end of the, end of the day, it's people working on it. Uh, so we do have our mistakes. You run into a mistake, we'd like to hear about it. And if you are aware of, let's say we're missing one month of a newspaper that runs for 40 years. Uh, and if you are aware of where we can locate that month, uh, you have that in your library or in your, in your university, or we're more than welcome to uh, contact us. So uh, this is the basic search. And if you want to use the advanced search, which I will use shortly, you just press here on this, uh, these three lines and it will open up the advanced search. Um, here, this is a feature that I mentioned only once you are registered, uh, you can use it. Uh, for example, okay, I hope, yeah. I opened the search history without checking if I did anything, embar any embarrassing searches before, but I'm glad I didn't. So um, let's see, for example, I will show you how to search and get access to the materials it's, uh, themselves. If you know, um, let's, uh, let's run a simple search. I'll give an example. If you want to search for England, for example, word England, of course you can search in any language. We have newspapers, um, in English, we have them, uh, you can see the full list down here because it lets you limit the search by language. So I uh, will address that shortly. Let's say we wanna search for England. Uh, you can limit your search by date. Let's, we wanna see uh, between 1830 and 1983. Um, now you can limit your search by region or by language. You don't want, you want to see uh, the, the term England has it appeared only in newspapers in North America. I, the default, of course, is that all regions are selected. If you want to clear them, you click here on clear and select North America. Um, language as well. If you want to clear and you don't want to search in Swedish or in Romanian, rather just in English and you press English here. Uh, this limitation by language is very important uh, especially for users of Hebrew and Yiddish. We have many Yiddish newspapers on the website. And um, for the majority of our users are still in Israel. Uh, we are seeing a rise in users from other countries and we are very glad we see this as an international archive, digital archive. But at least I'd, I'd say over 70% of our users are from Israel, searching mainly for the Hebrew uh, newspapers on the website. And for them in the past, once you would search for a term in Hebrew, as you know, uh, Hebrew and Yiddish using the same alphabet and 
a name of a city, for example, or a name of a person is a lot of times spelled the same. So you would run a search for Yerushalayim, for example, and you would get, I don't know, sometimes over 50%, 60% of your results would be in Yiddish. That's great if you are searching for Yiddish um, newspapers or you are a Yiddish scholar, but uh, if you are just interested in Hebrew, you could not uh, do that in the past. And then now you can check box whatever language you want the search to run on. So we, I, I selected here English, North America. Uh, you know what? Let's select all. Let's run on all the repository between these years. And here, another thing you can do is, again, the default is that we are searching on all titles. But if you know what titles you want to run the search only on certain titles, you can here clear all. See all the check boxes are gone. Uh, and you can start writing in whatever newspapers you want. If you want to uh, run the search on the forwards, on the reform advocate, for example. Um, and so it shows you these are the two titles that you selected, but we won't do that. I want to show all, select all. OK. So now that we'll be running a search. Uh, and shortly, I will explain what this button is and or not. Uh, let's run a search on England for a second. So we are searching for the term England. Uh, you can see here on, in red, the, I searched for in the language only in English. And in these dates between 1830 and 1983, we received 63,000 results for the term England. And now I will show you shortly how to uh, filter the, these results and to enter the newspaper, of course, itself. But I do want to show in just a second what this means here, New England and or not, how to use these uh, buttons, which can help you. For example, once I search for England, of course, I get results of England, but I get, I'm sure, many results of New England. And if I'm not interested in results related to New England, what I would do here is press, wait, just a moment. I need this to be right here. I would press England, not New England, and run the search again. And we had 63,000 results prior to me doing this. And here now you see, I took my results down to 24,000. It means that over 40,000 of the re, uh, results were, had, re, were related to New England. So take that into account. And of course, you can do that not just with or. If you want, if you want say, for example, articles New York and New England, so they would show you articles containing both of these search terms or as well. So that's how to use that feature. And now we are into the search results. Um, for, first of all, you can sort your, the first, uh, the default is best match first, of course, according to the search algorithm, but you can uh, set them according to the article title, category. I will touch what the category is shortly. You can see it here on the left side. Uh, publication title uh, or date oldest first and newest first. So I'm leaving it here at best match first, but know that you can sort it in other ways as well. Um, another thing here, uh, add to private list. Uh, I can add the, each of these articles uh, immediately to a private list. That's what I talked about. Uh, another one of the features only to registered users. I can, I have uh, either adding, once I press it, I can add it to a private list that exists. These are the private lists I have on my user. You can see a few ones in Hebrew. Or I can create a new list. Let's create a new list. Uh, a new list. Second. England. And I created a list here. And now you see, you can see it here if I want to add another one. It will already be in the existing one. Here I have a list of England and I can add more and more articles to this list. And I will show you later how to access it and what you can do with these lists. All right, so before we enter the article itself, I wanna say a few words about the filtration on the left side. The checkbox here is search only accessible titles. What does this mean? Um, 
I advise you to keep this checkbox checked. Um, in the future, as I said, uh, we will add to this collection uh, a large uh, portion of our, what we call daily or contemporary press published in Israel, but it will be only accessible uh, from the National Library of Israel. So we don't want you to run the search and get at least 50% of the results that you cannot access. So that's why the default is to search only on accessible titles. If you wanna see results from newspapers that you can't access, you can of course uh, disable this checkbox and go through these results. Um, results appear as either image, text, or basic. My default, the default here is uh, image. You can see a small snippet of the, re of the article. Um, text or basic will just give you here. I'll do it just for to show you what happens. A second, it shows you not the image, rather the text of the text itself. Um, another few um, filters that you can use to narrow down your results. Of course, we, we don't. There's nothing you can do with twenty four thousand results. Usually, I don't think anyone's going to go through twenty four thousand articles or search results. Uh, you can. Uh, filter them down by publication. You can see here the Palestine Post has 12,000 results, uh, Brene Brit Messenger 3,554, Sentinel 3,400, and so forth. 11 more here. And once I click one of these, it will just show me the results of this newspaper. Uh, we are um, working on an addition that will enable you to checkbox a few of them if you want to run the search here on, on several newspapers uh, simultaneously. Category, this is very interesting and important. All of the materials that we add to our project are uh, segmented in, uh, into articles or pieces. You know, each, uh, a daily newspaper uh, front page can be uh, consisted of over 20, so, so to speak, articles, small articles, pictures, uh, ads and this uh, article advertisement and illustration division enables you to search if you are interested. Uh, let's in ads. Ads would can be of course commercials or they can be different advertisements and the newspapers. Uh, so if you are interested in ads, you just click here and it will filter out the articles and illustrations. Illustrations, which includes also images photos, caricatures, which are very popular in newspapers. Uh, so if you're interested in visual results for your search term, that's, uh, that would be uh, what I would do here. I'm stopping for a second because I see so many uh, things in the chat box. Da, da, da. Oh, you want me, you saying, want me to stop for a second, Chena? No, I'm monitoring the chat and we can ask you at the end. So don't okay, worry. Okay, so no, look. For me, it's fine. If you want, stop for a second and have a few questions, or you prefer me to continue. I think it's better if we just do it at the end. So All right. No and, problem. Um, no problem. We'll do that. Thank you. All right. So um, language. All right. We we filtered it out because we ran the search only in English. But if I would not, uh, I'm sure that we would see results uh, for England in other languages as well. And then you could press the language that you want. Decade. Uh, if you want to see the results according to decades, you can see here uh, only you're only interested in this 1910 to 1919, you would press here. You can also filter it according to region, country, city, and so forth. So you can use one of the filters, you can use all the filters, and I'm sure that once you do that, you can get, get closer and closer to the results that are relevant for your topic of research. Um, so without further ado, let's, uh, enter one of the search results. I just clicked and opens up here. Um, this newspaper, the Asmonean from September 6th, 1850. So let's see, this is a small segment, England, great interest is now taken in England in American politics. Um, I want to show a few things here. Um, first of all, um, as you can see, just the, the newspaper itself takes a small portion of the page and to enlarge it, which I always do, uh, you can click here on the right side, excuse me, on this blue box, maximize, and you will already see a uh, large, uh, larger portion of the 
newspaper on your screen. You can also uh, close this uh, hide info pane and I will uh, use it later, but just for now, you can see that now all of the, all of my screen shows you the newspaper itself. To zoom in and zoom out, uh, you can use either these two, this uh, plus or minus here, or with your uh, scroller on your mouse, I zoom in, zoom out, and you here, you can see now the pages to move between pages of a, of an issue. You use your mouse, scroll right or scroll left, and you can zoom in, of course, to read to if you, something you're interested in. So this is the article um, that we uh, clicked. It was the first one. You can move to the next uh, search result by clicking this arrow, next search result, and. You can move back. Uh, you don't have a previous one because this is the first one. But if I would move to the next one, you could click previous. This, these two arrows on the left side, is for the next issue or previous issue of this specific uh, title, the Asmonian. Um, clicking here would get, bring you to the ID page of the Asmonian, which uh, I showed before. And clicking here on the center uh, gets you back to the search results. Uh, so let's move, for example, to the next search result for the search that we ran, uh, which was England, English in the, between these and these years. We'll run for a short second. Um, I will show you in the meantime, one second. Shayna, you maybe you want to ask, all right, because I, I thought that my internet was stuck for a second. It does seem a bit shaky. I apologize for that. Here, it's taking a bit of time to load. I apologize for that. And this result also for the as from the Asmonean from July 11th, uh, 1856. You can see the search term that you were looking for uh, highlighted in uh, yellow. So England here, the House of Lords have again allowed their, uh, have shown their inability to keep pace with liberal sentiments of the age and so forth. All right, so what, what can you do with the, this article that you ran into? If you're interested, it's relevant for you. You can do a few things. Right click, uh, first of all, you can see once, once you click it on the left side here, uh, if you haven't uh, hidden this panel on the left side, it's loading right now, but it will show you the text itself here. You have the text. Uh, this is the OCR level. So a few words about OCR and searching the collection. Uh, short pause from this. Uh, op OCR, op optical character recognition. I'm sure some of you are very familiar with this, some less. Uh, basically, this is the technology that enables us to take all of these millions of newspaper pages and make them searchable. Otherwise, uh, you know, if I take my iPhone and uh, take a picture of a newspaper page, it's just an image. Uh, the OCR translates all of the texts into uh, actual live text that you see here on the left side of my screen. Uh, it's very good in English and in Latin characters, so to speak. You see the OCR here. Of course, there will be mistakes. You know, it's not perfect. And uh, it also depends on the quality of the scan itself. So if the scan, the scan itself is good, and if we scan from paper, it will be better quality. If we scan from microfilm, the quality will be lesser, of course. But uh, English and Latin characters, which let's say uh, French, Italian, Spanish, Portuguese, the results are usually very good. Hebrew, Yiddish, Ladino, Judeo-Arabic, um, and Arabic is a totally different issue. I'll, I'll talk about that later on. Uh, the results vary. Um, they are not as good as they, sh they are in English. They, they have improved over the years. We're working on different ways to improve them even more. But just take into account once you run, when you run a search in Hebrew, in Yiddish, in Ladino, that uh, unfortunately, uh, it does not recognize all the results. And if you search for, for a word, I'm sure that at least 20% of the, the, the time that this word appeared in newspapers will not show up. 
Uh, we're working on it, uh, but uh, take that into account. So I'm back here. I want to do a few things with this article about uh, the House of Lords. I right click the article and I have a few options. I can just copy the article link if I want to just mail it or copy, open it in a new tab, for example. Zoom to this article is less relevant once because I'm already zoomed in on this article. These are a few other features. Clip this article, which I will uh, press now and test my, uh, my internet speed again, which is not too impressive as we already seen in the past. Um, apologize for that. All right, here you go. So this is what happened once I click the clip this article, it opens up the article itself in the, in the tab with uh, information of what newspaper, what, uh, what date, and you can print it. And uh, you can also just save this uh, link and you can also share it. When I scroll down here, uh, and this is relevant to all pages throughout the website, I can uh, share it either on social networks, but also on email. Uh, I'll click here and it will share this page and whatever page you're on, it's shareable and that's a nice feature. Uh, I wanna go back now. So that's one thing if you wanna just keep this article itself. Another thing of course, uh, which I use more often is save as PDF. Uh, you can click, uh, and this is a, I know, I'm, I'm sure that there will be a question about it in the future, so I'll say a word about it. It works to clip the PDF, but it's, uh, we still have a small bug. Once you click, clip this PDF, you know what, I'll show it. Um, it, it, you can save it now as a PDF, which is very useful. What you see we're lacking here is the bibliographical data, which is very important. It doesn't say that this is from the Asmonean, from what date and what page. So I can tell you that this is uh, we're working to fix this bug and I, we're on January 27 now. You can take my word that by two weeks from now, this will be fixed. So uh, now once you have this PDF, you can save it, make a collection. Of course, you can also add this uh, on the right click, add to private list and use this feature once again here. Text of this article, uh, you can see the text of this article um, also on the left side, correct article text. This, this is something that you won't see once you log in, uh, even when you register. Uh, unfortunately, at the moment, this is something that you, I, I can do as a uh, system admin, but um, I, the, uh, the, our system has the ability to give users uh, the option to correct article text. We are still not enabling this feature as we still haven't found a way to do it uh, safe enough. Uh, you know, once we open this up, um, I'm sure that the majority of the users will help us uh, correct the OCR mistakes and that will be great. But uh, even if the 1% that can make damage and, and until we find a way to monitor and save our collection. And as I said, we know we have a large responsibility taking care of the uh, all of these treasures. Until we do that, we cannot enable this feature, unfortunately. So uh, you can, as I said, clip the PDF, uh, add to private list, or share the article here again on email or on Twitter or Facebook. You can do all of these things also on page level. Copy the link, page link, PDF this page, uh, add to a private list, or share. Uh, another few things that you can do, you can download the issue PDF here on the top right side, if you want to. Um, you can also, this is another uh, clip, it's like a snipping tool. I'm sure you're all familiar with a snipping tool on your computer. So this is like a add-on snipping tool. I can snip and create myself uh, my own snippet here and I can share it or save it. And it's also quite useful. Um, all right. So this is uh, regarding the page view. And basically, this is how you can scroll through the uh, art, the newspaper. Because sometimes you don't just run a search. You just want to go through uh, issues and see if there's anything interesting. In this newspaper, it's quite hard. You see it's very small font. But in other newspapers, it's easier. And of course, as I said, you can zoom in to see if things are interest interesting to you or not. Um, I will um, 
hop on to say, Shana, we have, let's say, five more minutes before we move on to questions, right? Approximately. Sounds good. Okay, so I'll show these two fe other features shortly. Uh, the dates feature. Um, here, here you can see basically a list of all of the years that are available on our uh, website. You can, again, scroll down if you want through all of them. But if you know what year or what exact date you're looking for, you can just click it. And what this feature enables you is to see uh, on a certain date all of the newspapers that were published that are available, of course, online. So for example, if I'm interested in seeing all of the issues on the day after the Independence Declaration of Israel, so I'd hop on to the decade of 1940, 1949, and go down to 1948, click on May, and you can see uh, the day, on each day how many issues we have. So on, on the 2nd of May, we had 10 issues, and you have a list of them, and each one of them is clickable because that will lead you to the, the issue itself. So uh, the 14th of May uh, was a Friday. Of course, you won't. Uh, so on the following day, the Saturday, we just have two newspapers. But the forward, for example, the forwards, was published. So let's take a look on the, you can see the forwards. Uh, here you can see the newspaper of the day following uh, the Israel's uh, Declaration of Independence. But if you want to see the other newspapers, you'd probably prefer going to uh, May 16th. And I can open up Davar Al Mishmar, Haaretz, Hamashkif. And I'm opening up each one of them, and you can see it's interesting to compare how all of these different um, partisan newspapers uh, or, or party newspapers uh, reacted to the state of Israel's independence. Um, and it's, of course, a feature that you can use to follow other any event uh, following the death of somebody following a war, so following anything. So it's a no, new feature on the website that I, we found, uh, we've been asked for before in the previous version to add it and we've added it and we feel that it, it's, uh, it can be very useful uh, working with students as well, I, be it, uh, university students or high school students. Um, uh, this is the dates feature and Shortly before I finish uh, the tags feature, this is a new feature as well on the website that we are still trying out. Uh, as I said, we can't, we have not opened up yet the option for everyone to uh, correct the text. I don't know if and when that will happen, but the option to tag and create tags, which is available to you if you register, uh, is something that uh, gives you the user uh, the possibility to add another da data layer to the project, to the website. And uh, we'll see, we're we'll, we following it. The idea here is uh, you can tag basically any article, any issue and any newspaper, and you can search for tags. So most of the tags thus far as you can, oops, sorry, excuse me, uh, are in, uh, wait, hopped onto the wrong place. Let's go back to tags. Uh, most of the tags thus far are in Hebrew. Um, but so you can search in the future once there will be more tags. Uh, if you are interested in a topic, let's say I'm looking for Haifa in Hebrew. It's, okay, so somebody already tagged Haifa. There's one tag and then somebody tagged the soccer club Maccabi Haifa. Uh, and once you click it here, you will see publications with the tag Haifa, no matching results, documentation, no matching results. And this somebody uh, added an article uh, which was tagged. And just shortly to show you how you can tag yourself or create new tags, I will enter here. And I will finish shortly here. Somebody tagged this article uh, under Haifa. It's, uh, it's some, some kind of ad from uh, Haifa municipality. And you can see here, once you're standing on this article, uh, here, tags, number here, where I'm on the left side here, Haifa, these are the tags. You can add another tag to this article if you want to, or you can, let's say, 
let's look for something to tag. I'll just show you how to do that. Um, all right, let's say here this art this article this is a big article, but Habrita uh, Ivrita Olamit. So we can tag here. This is an article about Habrit. Now here you can see that once I start writing, it will give me an option if somebody has already created uh, a tag, so I won't duplicate tags. So Habrit Ivrit Olamit. And I've created this tag. And when somebody will search for a tag, he can see this that I tagged this article. So that was about tagging shortly. And now, really, last thing I will do is I will show you how you can use your account. So user information, that's basic for everyone. You know, your name, your display name, your email address, and so forth. Recent activity and private lists are important. Recent activity here, you can see your recently searched uh, recently searched. Uh, so you can see here, this is the searches that we ran here. England, not New England, and these are the previous searches that I ran. You are, you can also see when you search for it and how many results you had. And if I click it, it will basically run the same search again. So this is recently searched and recently viewed. It will show you the the articles that you've opened recently. So the, here is the article about Haifa that we showed, and here are all the issues of uh, the newspapers from May 16th. So you will see that each time you enter the site. Recently added comments, tags, and correct the text box. So no, correct the text box you won't see, but if you've added a tag, you can see it under recently added tags. And private lists, here are your private lists. So we have this list of England that we just created. You can see the articles in it. You can of course remove it from list. You can add a note, move to another list, and on the list level, you can email the list. So you can create a list of articles on a topic, and then you want to just send it to all of the students in your class or to, you, to, or to a colleague. It's very easy. You just click email list, and it will list the whole, it will send all of the articles in the list, including as, click, as links to whomever you share it with. Wow. I tried to speak about things that I can speak about three hours in probably 35 minutes. Mm -hmm. I hope that I was coherent. Usually and I've had these workshops or tours in Israeli universities and you know, is, um, it, so I could never speak 30 minutes uh, without anyone interrupting me, it's Israeli universities. So I don't know if I lost you for a second, if I'm, my things made sense, oh. that was clear enough and um, I didn't have time to uh, just change this one more second before we move on to questions. Um, as I mentioned, we have uh, added the Jariah, the Palestinian press collection. So it's also part of this, uh, of this repository. You can search and view the Palestinian newspapers that NLI has, one of the most important collections of uh, Palestinian newspapers. It's a very nice project. Uh, we've added newspapers up to 1948, and I hope uh, that in the near future we can uh, add more newspaper titles to this collection. And it's also available on a separate website. If you search Jariyad, J-R-A-Y-E-D, and it's very similar. It functions the same, and um, for whoever is interested and can read Arabic, that's a great collection as well that I recommend. And now... Shayna, if you've had a few questions, and I'll be glad to answer. Um, so first of all, thank you so much um, for this and introducing us to this really incredible resource. Um, a lot of the questions were about specific publications and our, um, you know, what's going to happen with this or what's going to happen with that. And rather than ask about everyone, although I'm definitely curious, in the interest of time, if there is is there a way to request particular um, publications or particular years? Like, what's the best way to do that? Is it first of all, you? first of all, as we, we have a saying in, in in Hebrew in Israel, you can always ask a request. Doesn't mean that <laughs> doesn't mean you'll get what you ask for, but you can ask. Um, but without joking, we um, we have, uh, as I said before, um, our partner from Tel Aviv University, Yaron Su, is academic director. And uh, he has an academic uh, advisory board. Um, we 
uh, work according to their recommendations. And of course, as this is uh, the project is mostly funded by private uh, donors or foundations, some of them uh, give us a free hand to, you know, if they say, all right, this is the sum that you have for this year, and you can add whatever newspapers that you deem are important that you want to work. And some, you know, donors, they, for them, it's important. All right, we're giving you this money, and please add this and this newspaper. So, uh, you know, if we have the funding, uh, we, we're open to hearing suggestions, of course. Uh, it's not a, a locked list that is, can't be uh, affected. And of course, if we receive numerous uh, questions or requests about a certain newspaper, that definitely pops up into our mind. We say, all right, it's very interesting. Everyone's asking about Hadoa, for example, that was published in New York, the Hebrew newspaper for over 80 years. And, we, and so we know that that's an interesting newspaper. So definitely feel free to request, recommend. I can't promise that we will uh, be able to answer all of them, but we'll, we'll give it our best try, of course. Thank you. There was a, a, several questions about the Arabic language collection, which I know you started to speak about, and I just want to try and combine them into one. Um, I know you spoke a bit about Jariyat and the Palestinian um, newspaper collection. There is also a question, right? I just see another one came in, right? Palestinian sources after 1948, um, newspapers from the, if the newspapers from Tel Aviv University's Diane Center Arabic newspapers are, are included. Um, okay. And just, if you could speak a little bit about the Arabic. I'll, I'll, say, I'll say a few things about You're it. welcome to share your screen again. I just wanted to see your pretty face. Yeah. Okay, to share screen. Um, all right, um, go into Jariad. No, one second. Here, let's see, this is, I'm just opening one of the newspapers. So here, whenever you click, uh, go to the ID of one of the newspapers that is available in Jariad, you can click here and go to Jariad uh, website. It, as you see, it's very similar, just a bit different colors. Um, a few things about the collection, the Arabic collection. First of all, at this moment, we have the materials in Arabic are not with full OCR. Unfortunately, the OCR in Arabic was not good enough when we started working on it. And we didn't feel that it was worthwhile running OCR and getting 80% of the results that are false. So what we did is we worked with a company based in Amman in Jordan, and they hand uh, manually uh, corrected the headlines of the articles. So, so even though the majority of the text in the newspaper is not searchable, whatever is searchable is usually 100% correct. So you can definitely search for places, names of important people and so forth, and you will find them in this collection. Um, we are now actually, uh, we ran a small pilot on a few months of uh, one of the newspapers to see if there's improved OCR that and we are optimistic that the results are better. And I hope that in the future, we will run OCR on new materials added in Arabic and possibly also retrace our paths and add OCR to all of the Arabic material. Uh, to the questions of Palestinian newspapers past 1948, uh, we are uh, looking for both funding to do that. And of course, uh, in newspaper collections, once you get closer to um, our days, copyright restrictions are a bit rougher. So, and of course the political situation combined that with copyright restriction, we will be doing our best to do so. We are going to add uh, Al Itihad and the daily newspaper published in Haifa. It's already available online uh, into the 1980s, I believe. And we'll be adding that. And, Definitely, we want to add more Palestinian newspapers, Arabic newspapers to our collection. Dayan Center newspapers of Tel Aviv University. Uh, I'm not too familiar with that collection. As far as I recall, it's a lot of newspapers not from either Israel or Palestine. It's more from uh, neighboring countries, Egypt, Lebanon, uh, Jordan, Iraq. And so I don't think that these newspapers, if they are not uh, 
Jewish newspapers will be a part of our project in the future as I see it, okay? Thank you. Um, I just also, since you mentioned it, wanted to ask about the issue of copyright because that's come up. So obviously mm -hmm. the newspaper is copy, you know, 150 years old or over 100 years old, there's less concerns. But for concern, but if people want reprints, you know, trying to figure out what the copyright restrictions are for these, what's the best way to go about it? Should they contact you? Should you know? To yeah, what should? They yeah, do? Well, I'll I'll try to show if maybe I'll, um, for example, um, here let's take a look at Haaretz, a newspaper, you know, the Israeli important Israeli daily that we just added to the website uh, last year. We've started adding it and we'll be adding more years. Uh, so here in, in the ID a section, you have to see the ID. Uh, um, you can see uh, possible uses. For more information, click here. And here you have the information. Each title has this possible uses part. Um, so you can just read it. And uh, if you, there are any more questions, specific questions about if you want to use, uh, for example, part of the newspapers to reprint in your book or an article. Uh, um, if you don't find the answer here in this possible uses, you can always uh, write to copyright at nli.org.il and they'll be happy to uh, give you an answer. And if, as you said, uh, if we go, as we go late into the 20th century, um, you know we're dealing with copyright restrictions we we definitely respect copyright and all of the newspapers uh that are online we we never add a newspaper without uh doing due diligence getting uh, um, uh getting the permission from the publisher if, uh, definitely if it still exists but also if it was if ceased publication let's say 20 30 years ago it's still under copyright restrictions so we do our best always to contact the uh, owners or copyright owners so thank you so much. Um, I'm going to end with this question and then we will um, have Rachel wrap it up. But that's, um, you know, there's a question about how to find out what's going on, what's being added to the to the Jewish that's historical a, press. I'm, I'm laughing because uh, it's a good about specifically about the press collection or more generally speaking? I would say both. both. All right. So um, more generally speaking uh, about not just NLI, not just, not just the digital press collection. I recommend going to NLI websites. Very interesting, as I showed you before. And there are other uh, digital archives, but also there's a very interesting blog and articles being added daily. So that's a good place to see what's going on in the library, uh, generally speaking. And uh, specifically for the newspaper collection and what newspapers have been added, um, I can. Um, I can show you here once the, right, it's in Hebrew, but let's go to English for a second. So you can see here, this is about, about the project a bit. And here you can see new titles added. Uh, we will be also adding about here in, about the project. You can read more about the project, about our staff partners, terms of use and copyright. That's the question asked. We will be adding very shortly. I just had a long, conversation today with a few of my colleagues that we will add another box here it will be called the uh, news uh, the like website news and there we will add more information also about uh, newspapers recently added and also about our plans for the following year so you know what newspapers will be added during 2021 and maybe even further along the way and other interesting things related to the collection okay, okay. Thank you so much. Um, I am going to pass it off to Rachel just to add a couple of closing words very briefly. Thank you. Thank you, Eyal, so much. Thank you to the Schusterman Center who have uh, brought out some amazing numbers of people. And I see that there's vast interest, Eyal, in this project. And I hope we can do some more. 
follow-up meetings. We'll have this recording available. It will go out to people who were registered for the event, and we'll also have it available through the Brandeis Library at some point. I want to point out that the National Library of Israel, in addition to this amazing historical Jewish press site, has other amazing sites. Shana's favorite, the ephemera, my favorite, the Hebrew manuscripts. Um, so feel to reach out to me as Brandeis Librarian for questions about any of those also. And so again, thank you, Professor Sarna. Thank you to the Schusterman Institute. Rachel, uh, in the National Library, yes. I just want to add, as I said before, I for some reason I can't type my email on the chat. Oh, okay. So basically, my email is I'm saying ayal.miller at nli.org.il. And really, I, I invite you all to write me for questions, suggestions, mistakes, errors that you've run into. We've, we'd like to hear those things as well. So feel free uh, to write me for any one of these uh, instances. Thank you, everyone. Look forward to seeing you another time. All right, thank you.